And live from Conscious Studios, it's your boy, the DJ TJ. It's the Kickback Show producer spotlight. Today we have Benny Cassette in the building. Let's see what he's working on. What's up, everybody? This is Benny Cassette, and um, this is how I make music and produce. So the first thing that um, I think is super important and something that I really try to put a lot of work into is, um, you know, everybody has access to the same um, program, same soft synth, same bundle pack, same sample pack, same, you know, DAWs. Um, for me, I'm always trying to make sure that my sounds are unique and my goal is always to have sounds that maybe people haven't heard or nobody's used before. So I spend a lot of time um, creating sounds, making my own samples. I spend a couple weeks um, every few months just getting drum sounds off of different things and chopping them up and trying to make them sound interesting by remiking them, running through guitar amps. Because um, I feel like, you know, as a producer and so many people are producing now and making music that it's really important to have something unique about what you do. And early on, one note that I always got was like, oh man, your drums are, are so different. Like your drums, they knock in a different way. And I felt like that was because I was not using all the sample packs that everybody had. I was actually like making my own drum sounds. So, you know, before I even get started on an idea, um, I always make these folders of little chop sounds, stuff, some stuff I've even recorded on my iPhone. Like I might hear something and just record it on my phone or, I might be in with a guitar player and um, and we create something. So in my folder today, I was going through it because I was like, we're going to make, you know, an idea and we're going to turn that idea into something. I was like, what do I have in my folder that we've made this past week? And one of the things we did, like we have um, this thing that's really dope. This was me and um, my guy were in the studio and we were just messing around. He started playing this idea. I like played it on the keyboard. He replayed it and we have that. Um, we have another one that we did the same day. It's just that's super sick too. We got a little chop of some background singers. So for me, I just want to have all these crazy little tidbits of sounds because all these are forms of inspiration and all these are different ways that you can start a track, start an idea, create a character. I think that first one is, is pretty dope. So I'm going to use that one and just pull it in. Again, people always ask me, um, what, what DAW do you use? Like, what's your favorite? I don't really have a favorite. I bounce around. Sometimes I work in Logic. Sometimes I work in Ableton. I always end up in Pro Tools. Pro Tools is like where I record vocals and like edit all my vocals and everything. But today, I'm in a Logic mood. So we're gonna mess with Logic. So I got this little piece in here, which is awesome. Like I think that already, like I already hear the rhythms, I already hear what we're gonna do. So then I start messing with drum sounds. The other thing that I think is important that a lot of producers, beat makers forget and don't think about is um, it's really important to create a sense of melody when you're making tracks because whoever's writing a song over it, whoever you're gonna collaborate with on, on it, you want them to hear a melody inside of what you're making. So you can make the hottest beat in the world with the weirdest sounds you've ever heard and be like, oh my God, this beat is crazy. These sounds so crazy. But if I, if I can't hear a melody over it, like I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. And that's important because of how many times people play me beats and I'm like, I can't sing anything over this. So you gotta really think about like a sense of melody and some, like a, what kind of song can I put over this? So I got all these crazy sounds that I've like taken from different places, got from different places. Um, I guess we should probably start with a hi-hat because that's like important to get a little, little rhythm going. And there's not really any right or wrong way to start. Sometimes I'll have some crazy drums and I'll start building around the drums. In this case, I just have this guitar thing I like today. You know, we happen to be working tonight. I had this folder and I was like, 
let's do something with that today you know that feels right but i could have easily just started with some dope drums and built around that too and played chords over that or something snares where are you snares So then we're gonna get into some snare ideas. Ah, there we go. And I like that the guitar has like this little swing in it. You know, don't be afraid to experiment with rhythms because everybody always just goes straight to the, you know, and then they do like the trap thing, which is dope. But like, you can experiment too. You can mess with with swing. You can. Like, don't quantize everything. Like, you don't have to quantize every single thing because human feel also sets you apart from everybody else. Everybody quantizes. So don't quantize stuff. Leave it loose. Like, just take time to get a really cool feel with what you're doing. Another thing I always like tell people is um, I mess with with the tuning of my drums a lot. Like I mess with the pitch a lot, and I think that is something interesting that people don't do enough of because like the character of this snare is really cool. But but if I start to pitch it up, it does something totally different. It changes like the whole feel. Now all of a sudden it's moving more because because the tightness of the snare now makes it actually like the snare is taking up less space. So now the track is moving more. Then if I tune it down, now all of a sudden the beat gets super heavy and it's like a whole other character. So think about how you can use the tuning of the drums to actually change the feel of the beat. Drum tuning is super important. Because I have the two snares, which is cool, but the little ghost snare has got like, it's like too, it's, it's too loud. So I'm going to separate it because I want to do something different to the second snare. And again, like you don't have to just do the snare on the two and the four. Like like play around with, with where the snare sits. Play around with how it sits. You know, there's no rules, man. It's like, rules is what makes people sound like everybody else. But when you break the rules, that's when all of a sudden you stumble on something and you got your own you have your own sound, you have your own style, and people start to say, like, damn, I want a beat from such and such. Like, people say, oh, I want a Benny Cassette track because he has his own sound. That's the goal. That's better. So now we start to get like a feel for, okay, the drums are gonna swing a little bit. Another thing, like all these little details, man, like feels a little sluggish to me, just a little bit. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to speed it up just a hair because I feel like that's going to just make it swing a little harder. So let's raise it. Hey, there we go. And again, like. I don't, I don't like the tuning of the kick. I don't know if it's the sound of the tuning, but I'm gonna mess with the tune of the kick and see if I tune it down a little bit, does it like make it feel a little bit heavier in a good way? Maybe I wanna change the kick. Ooh, that's ugly in an awesome way. You always want your drums to make people do that little face that you see. You know, when people be like, uh, 
you want to make sure that your drums make people do that. Because if you play your drums or you play a beat for somebody and they hear your drums, they're like, oh, that's cool. Then your drums suck. You got to step it up. <laughs> but they go, dang, those drums are crazy. Uh, then you're, you're doing the right thing. That's the goal. When people don't do that in a song, I go back and redo the drums. Okay, now I actually like this kick better. Oh yeah, much better. Oh my God, much better. All right. Almost get the pattern right. Now, because I also um, am an artist as well as a producer, when I'm working on a, a song or an idea, like I'll just start singing stuff over because I want to know if the track is going to speak to another artist or another singer or rapper and make them hear stuff. So I'll like lay, lay ideas sometimes or I'll put down like little vocal things sometimes. And a lot of times, like when you do that, you'll end up coming up with a dope sample that you can chop up and put in the beat too. Like I don't know how many times I've sung something on on a track I'm working on and then all of a sudden I like add effects to it and I start chopping it up and it becomes a part of the a part of the beat. Um, one thing that I have learned also on my journey as a producer is I used to sit and just literally make beats all day long. Like I would sit in my studio and just crank out tracks after track after track and I would send these folders out to people which was awesome because people would take the beats that way but new way that I've really been working is when I go in the room with an artist, I literally will just make the track on the spot. So like whatever the vibe is, whatever the energy is, I'll end up just making a track like while everybody's in the room. I used to not be able to do that because it sounded like the scariest thing in the world to have to sit there and make a beat with people watching you, which is kind of what's going on right now. Um, but as I got more comfortable with it and I started to understand that as a producer, what you're doing is your job is to capture a moment. Your job is to basically take a photograph of a moment and make a song out of it. So like, for instance, there was an artist I was working with and he was going through a really bad breakup with his girl. The day before, he was the happiest guy ever. So we made a happy song. The next day he came in, I had all these happy ideas and his heart was broken. He didn't want to make any happy music. He wanted to make some music that was dark and like, like evil sounding. So I had to scrap all my happy ideas and come up with something on the spot. And then I was like, man, I should stop preparing for sessions and I should just feed off the energy in the room and the energy off the artist. So I always encourage producers too, like, you know, get used to making music in a room with people. So you don't always show up and just play a folder of beats. Like sometimes I'll go in and play somebody, you know, a track, you know, like whatever. I've done it with Logic before. I've done it like in Kanye's a session, whatever, where it's like rather than sit there and like, play a bunch of beats I have in a folder, I'll just be like, man, you want to just make something? And 99% of the time, the artist's like, yeah, man, let's make something. That's awesome. I'll write the song while you make the beat. As opposed to like, yeah, just leave me a folder. So I tell producers now that one way to sort of stand out from everybody else is figure out how to make stuff in the room because most producers can't do that and they don't do it. They just make stuff in their bedroom or they make stuff in their private studio and send it. So get used to like, figuring out how to make, you know, something and feed off the artist's energy. So, like, if an artist is heartbroken, you can make some music that feels like that. If the artist just freaking, you know, got a check for a million dollars and they're jumping up and down, you can make some music that reflects that. Feed off the artist's energy and put that into the music that you're making. Cool. So, I like how that's sounding. So, then the default place that you want to go is, like, bass. All right, cool. I got this cool drums. I got this cool little guitar part. I got now I think like some bass. Do I want to play a bass line? That could be cool. Um, some 808s could be cool too. You can never go wrong with 808s. Everybody loves them. I'm born and raised in LA. In LA, 808s is king because this is car culture. And in my neighborhood growing up, whoever had the most bass in their low rider was the coolest guy on the block. So, hey, you can never go wrong with that. So 
we'll, we'll just lay that for now. That's like a nice little bit. <laughs> Got this this little section that's nice, a little four bar loop. So one argument says once you have that, you just you know make three three minutes of that and you're good. Another thing that's kind of interesting sometimes that I do is create a different section. Like the track doesn't have to stay like that the whole time because again, you're trying to inspire somebody with what you're making, and you want them to hear different things over your track that inspires them to actually write a song to it and actually like create something to it. So maybe when we come out of that, like we change the drums up completely and that could be nice. So maybe we do something like this. So then it's like we're starting to create these different sections and that's that can inspire something totally different because this beat this part of it makes me want to go makes me just kind of want to write it but this section makes me want to open up you know so maybe there's different melodies that happen just because you changed up the rhythm and that's important to understand because part of being a producer is understanding how to arrange a song because making a beat is not a producer like everybody makes beats the producer is the guy that takes this beat and makes it sound like a hit record and making a hit record has to do with the arrangement the song that goes over it like all that stuff is part of this process what happened to the little thing I made Yeah, see, I love that. And sometimes you'll come up with a little section like this just as an afterthought, and then you'll be playing it for somebody that'll be like, yo, that's how the whole track needs to be. And you're like, oh, thank God I made that part. Because otherwise you'd be like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Hey, that's hard, right? And then maybe you like it so much, you're like, well, maybe the beat should ride like that for a minute. And then it becomes like a bridge or like a pre-chorus or something. And, you know, don't be afraid to get musical on them and throw some chords over that bad boy. Because, you know, chords are good. Chords inspire more melodies. Chords inspire different things. Now, I know a lot of guys don't really know um, chords and all that. I meet a lot of producers, and they're just really good at chopping up samples and chopping up sounds that's awesome but you know what don't be afraid to sit down and spend some time figuring out chords figuring out like how stuff goes together because that's just another tool man you know it's another tool when you go in with an artist and the artist wants to write a song a lot of times artists are like can we just start with some chords and if you can't play some basic chords and a good way to learn chords is learn chords from some of your favorite songs like sit there watch the youtube video i do it all the time man i learn chords for old songs that i love I figure out the chords on the piano and then all of a sudden I, I start changing stuff around and before you know it, I have figured out a whole song. And that's like a tool because now I understand what somebody else did so it'll inspire me to like create my own chords on my own. So don't be afraid to spend time actually learning, you know, elements of other songs that you love and put that in your arsenal. Put that in like your toolbox of things you can pull out when you sit with an artist. Artist says you want to play some chords. Maybe you only know four chords. That's cool. That's all you need. Great songs are four chords. So you just, you know, you play some simple chords. All of a sudden, you've created a song with an artist, and maybe that's a placement for you. So don't be afraid to actually, you know, put that work in too rather than just always making beats. <laughs> I 
maybe you don't want to go here. Maybe it like makes the beat too soft or whatever, but for the sake of what we're doing today of just like showing different things that I might do when I'm making a track, I'm gonna lay some chords down. Obviously it's cool because it changes the whole integrity of the track, but it also allows like a different type of artist that may want to jump on this track. decide to go somewhere else I can take out the guitar that we have that's great that's awesome so now we have like we have all these interesting parts I don't know what goes where, but we have some stuff to play with now. Now, the, the other thing that's interesting too is when you have like all these different sections, right? So if I was gonna send this track to, I don't know, to like Kendrick, I might arrange it one way. If I was gonna play it for Miguel, I might arrange it another way. So it's also, good to realize that sometimes when you have tracks with all these different sections and you're doing that there's small things you can do to it to make it fit to different people and that's happened a lot too for me like i'll make a song or, or do a production that is super hard and super minimal and fits one type of artist and then i'll add some chords to it and all of a sudden it's like like oh man like uh, you know like i i had done this song for instance with miguel on his last project and we had some guitar chords on it. We had like, you know, this really hard ass drums and it, and it had like these really beautiful chords over it. And I remember um, somebody played the track, not knowing Miguel had it, somebody played it for Kendrick. And Kendrick was like, I love it. Just take all the chords off and just give me the hard ass drums. And it made me think like, damn, that's crazy. Like just by taking those chords off is the difference between Miguel cutting it and Kendrick cutting it. So sometimes it's interesting to think about you know, think about who you're playing the track for. Think about who you're giving it to and then sort of cater to that as well. Because like a lot of times, like I'll hear a track and I'll tell somebody like, man, take that out and I want to use it for something. Or, you know, put chords on this part or add another sound on this part and I want to use it for this. So don't be afraid to take the same idea and mess with it. You know, like don't be afraid to try different, different uh, versions of the same track or same idea and maybe like it will work for somebody else because the name of this game is really about having options for people having a lot of different fields that people can tap into and just trying to catch inspiration because if you can get somebody inspired then all of a sudden you you got a song with them and do not be afraid to bring live musicians in to do stuff. One of the most awesome things you can do is make your own samples. Like make your own guitar parts, make your own piano parts. You know, if you got a friend that plays, if you can play two notes on a guitar, sit there and like play and find cool things you can do because that's all like original stuff that you're creating that nobody else has. Nobody's gonna be able to like, well maybe now you will because I'm making this video, but this little thing right here, and I like this so much, I might use this for my album, but this little sound right here, like you can't find that anywhere. I, cre I created that, I made that. So basically now, you know, that's something new and unique that nobody else has that I made with my guy. 
So don't be afraid to like call your homies at play. Don't be afraid to tr to experiment yourself, make your own samples. Like if you if you show up somewhere at a studio and there's a piano sitting in the room, pull out your iPhone and just play some interesting stuff, man. I've recorded live drums on my iPhone and actually used it on a song that's come out. Like the drums were completely recorded in my iPhone. They sounded so tight that I actually put them in the song and the song came out and, it's, and everybody was like, man, how'd you record those drums? What type of mics are those? Blah, blah, blah. And I didn't have the heart to tell people, no mics, it's my iPhone. But it sounded so crazy and I was just willing to try it and experiment. So don't be afraid to experiment, to make your own samples, to make your own sounds because like that is really what's gonna set you apart as a producer is having stuff that nobody else has. Thank you.